so I just thought I'd talk briefly about putting clipper on the printer so like I said I removed the main board I removed the screen I removed the breakout board at the hot end what I so what I was doing is I disconnect disconnected the ribbon cable from the main board for the x-axis um, and using my multimeter I was able to uh, tone everything out I all the wires coming from the uh, ribbon cable I was able to find out exactly what each one goes to so when I uh, replaced the main board I took each I, I cut the cable and put on my own JST connectors on each wire and put connections on and that's how I have it connected to the board so actually what board I'm using is I'm using an SKR Mini E3 V3. I love that board. It's it's got dual Z on it. It's got you know it's got everything you need for a printer. Um, I have it. I when my the board on my A Net A8 Plus went out, that's what I put on there. When the board for my A Net A8 went out, that's what I put on there. And now I have it on this one. Um, now the ribbon cable for the hot end, uh, for all, all the fans and everything at the hot end, that was a little bit trickier. I was able to tone everything out and figure out what all of the wires were for, except for three of them. Um, I couldn't tell if they were grounds. There's an LED light on the breakout board. Um, I couldn't figure out which wires go to the LED light. So what I ended up doing is I just removed that I removed the breakout board, I removed the ribbon cable, and I just made my own cables. I actually had some female JST plugs, so I made some connectors and have everything connected um, right there at the hot end. So if I need to replace a fan, for example, I don't have to remove the wire all the way back to the main board. I can just take the fan off, unplug it from the connector right there at the hot end, and, and swap it out. It's pretty pretty simple um, so yeah so I put the SKR mini E3 V3 in here um, I had to design and print an adapter to be able to mount the board underneath um, and then I put clipper on it and I did all the clipper calibrations and it it's great I have the printer plugged into a computer that a Linux computer that's um, I have Clipper on the Linux computer, so I don't need to, you know, worry about a Pi or anything like that. Um, but anyways, it's the, the printer's fine now. It's great, you know. Now I now I have Clipper on it, and I got Clipper. I've got everything calibrated. Everything seems to be working just fine. I was able to get the servo working and and use to use the uh, use it as a probe in Clipper. I did the probe calibration. It did the Z offset, and yeah, uh, last thing really I need to do is just build a bed mesh, which isn't really a high priority right now because I mainly print just small stuff. So probing in the center of the bed, center of the bed is enough. So my final thoughts on this printer and conclusion. Um, in the beginning, it printed great. It the first couple prints, especially out of the filament that they sent fantastic um, the, the prints were awesome you go back and look at uh, one of my previous videos where I showed you the first prints they were awesome um, then uh, if it weren't for the you know the firmware and the, what was going on with the printer it this would be a great printer um, you're, you're better off in my opinion buying an Aquila X2 and doing whatever upgrades to that that you want. Um, I wouldn't, you know, do you need a dual Z? Mm, not really. I mean, not if you're, if you have an Aquila X2, I don't think you really need a dual Z. Um, but other than the dual Z and the, the just slightly larger bed and the um, the servo probe 
is not, and you know, the touch screen, the Wi-Fi. I mean, okay, so all of those sound like good features, but I don't know. The, if they could fix the firmware and make it so this, so the Wi-Fi worked all the time, and and the printer and the firmware was open source, then I think you'd have a decent printer on your hands. But I don't really know if it'd be worth the what is it 399 or whatever it is to to buy it i i forget how much it was maybe it was 299 i'm not sure um but anyways yeah i mean you're better off just getting an aquila x2 and just doing whatever upgrades to it that you want so yeah it's a shame that this one didn't work out i mean it worked out in the end because i got i was i got clipper on it and it seems to be going fine um, is it worth the extra 30 millimeter in bed size? No, no, it's probably not. Like I said, I haven't printed anything on using the full bed of my Aquila X2, so I would say it's not worth the extra large, you know, the the larger bed size. Now, if it was a 300 millimeter bed, then I'd say, okay, yeah, let's try and make this work, but it's not. Um, that's what my Anet A8 Plus is for. So, um... Yeah, I hope uh, this was helpful for anybody. Um, just because my experience for this was not good does not mean that yours will be bad. But these are just my thoughts and my experience. So, um, yeah, good luck. If, if you have this printer, good luck. And if it's working for you, don't change anything. Just keep using it. Thanks for watching.